Hi, I'm Burl. This is Bill and this is Dale. We would, we would like to welcome you to the video. In this video, we show you how to replace the slide-out floor without removing the entire slide-out. We will be using three different slide-outs in our demonstration. Let's begin. Okay, th these are the minimal tools that you'll need to do this uh, floor change on a slide-out. Uh, the sockets that you see are uh, 5 8 and 9 16 uh, deep well sockets. And in this clip you turn the power off first to the unit because you'll be messing with electrical wires in the slide out. You notice that uh, Bill is taking the molding loose obviously by removing the screws. This is the, uh, the bottom piece of molding on the end wall of the slide out. He's checking behind the rubber to see if there happens to be any screw back there because a lot of times there is. And he found one. And you always want to try and remove it so you can reuse it. So he went and got a pry bar to try to take it off in one piece so he doesn't bend it all up. And now he's cleaning the putty tape off of the end wall. And we're lining up the, the stilts or the boards we use to hold the slide out up. Uh, being lined up with the existing holes in the molding so that when you drill the board out and you get ready to screw it on that the holes line up and you don't have extra holes in the molding or, or slip and put a, mo a hole in the hung glass on the side of this slide out. Now he's moved the board away from the slide out so he can ream the hole and he doesn't drill into the wall. Removing the screw cover on the on the fascia ring to remove the screws that hold the fascia ring onto the slide out. We're getting ready to remove the radius metal on the bottom of this slide out. There was a, a screw found on the side, so they've got to remove the molding a little further so they can get to the screw. I believe he just found it. And there appears to be a screw on the other end. These two screws that uh, they found um, are not normally there, but uh, in this case they were and they happen to be on both ends. And now the radius metal has been removed. Removing the screws on the, um, the plastic or, or um, well, the plastic that clips in the radius metal because the screws run into the, the um, overhang of the floor, of which you'll see in a later clip. The plastic ring or the plastic trim piece was left there because it does not need to be removed from the wall. The stilts are line, being lined up. To make sure that the screws go in the existing hole once again so that you don't add holes to the side wall, the end wall of the slide out. And now the board is being secured. The screws have been lined up. And by the way, we use a uh, three inch, uh, two thirds thread flathead with a washer uh, to secure this. Most any screw, as long as it's about three inches long will work for this operation. We are now inside the unit pulling the dinette booth apart. It's best to remove the dinette booth completely uh, to include the main wall of the slide out or the end wall. Um, it prevents you from damaging the booth dinette and it makes it easier to put the new floor in.
half the dinette booth is ready to remove and uh, on the other side Dale is removing the the uh, padded board on top of the dinette because the panel needs to be removed to get the screws out of the back wall of the dinette that are secured to the main wall to slide out. And that is the screw, obviously. Um, in this particular case, it appears that there's only one screw. And the rest of the dinette comes out of the slide out. We're pulling the electrical box apart now. And we put the wire nuts back on the on the wires uh, just for just because safety reasons, just in case for some reason it's uh, the power is not off, which would be the flex wire or the black coated wire because that's the one that runs underneath the room. We're putting a pry bar in place to lift the floor up lift the slide out up so that uh, blocks can be placed under the fascia of the inside of the slide out to keep the the room up in the air in the front the stilts keep it up in the air obviously in the back or the outside and now you can see the placement of the block and this is a video of the wire that's loose and we're underneath the room removing the uh, slide out feet from the bottom of the floor. Now the foot drops down and clears the bolts. Now you slide the foot back up to the floor and drive the bolt up into the room because the bolt is dropped from the inside to the outside. The bolts are being removed from the floor. Screws are being removed from the bottom of the floor which secure the floor to the end wall in this case and the main wall. They go all the way around there about every six to nine inches roughly. Um, and you try and find them all, sometimes you don't. The radius metal grounding wire is being removed. It just simply grounds the radius metal to, to the uh, floor. Now you can see that uh, once the screws are removed, all you got to do is go in and and hit the floor with your feet. The floor, floor will pop loose. You leave, your slide rams are left out for the floor to hit so you can't fall through. And then you're out and then you're running them, you're running the rams back in or the ram back in. Make sure nobody gets under that room. Nobody gets under the room while you're working on it. Rams are in. You're going to try and shake this floor loose to pull it out. I'm just going to, I'm going to pull it down. You know, you're looking to see if they put any screws in the very front that you cannot reach uh, from the outside. I'm breaking the screws off that are out of sight. I use a, a pry bar and a hammer to, to bust the screws and pry the floor loose from the end wall.
In some cases you have to do this on both end walls. And, and now the floor will pretty much slide right out. And Polymax is put back on the new floor because when this unit was built we had Polymax under the slide out floor. It's stretched and nailed. We're carrying the floor over now and uh, getting it ready to put under the slide out. In this slide out's case it had a reverse angle on the slide out floor. We called it a simulated flush floor. Um, so the angle is actually up instead of down because it doesn't slide out when the room slides out it doesn't slide down in a uh, pan to have a flush floor. Lining the floor up, sliding it in under, your blocks on the inside hold the inside of the room up so the floor can slide under it. And it's not sliding under the blocks, it's sliding in between the blocks. Utilize a, a floor jack to help stabilize the floor. Put your skirt boards on. They get screwed to the outside edge of the floor. And in most cases they will be all the way across. They'll probably be different sizes depending on fender skirt or wheel well locations and the fender skirt. The floor is ready to go up and put in place now. They're wiggling it in and the floor is up and in place by hand right now. And the rams are being ran out to help support the floor. Make sure nobody gets under that room. Nobody gets under the room while you're working on it. Your floor will have been, you should have pre-measured your floor from, you should have pre-measured your floor from the old floor uh, to line the holes back up with the feet and your electrical wire. So when you put the new floor in, it's already drilled and ready to go and all you'd have to do is drop the bolts or mark it and then drill it once it's the rams run out and uh, pretty close to in place at this point. You'll see a drill bit come down through the floor and then you'll see him line it up driving the bolts down, lining them up with the slide out feet. Here you will drive the screws up to final secure of the main floor here every six to nine inches. And this of course is the padding going in. We use a white crown staple gun to uh, secure the padding so it doesn't move around when we're putting the carpet in. The carpet, the existing carpet we took out because for the most part there was nothing wrong with the carpet. A little dirty maybe, but can be cleaned. Going to get it in place the best you can by hand. And you're going to get your knee kicker out and you're going to stretch and push the carpet back into the wall and uh, have your, knee, your D10 ready or your staple gun ready to uh, nail the carpet down. I'm going to put the two wings on, one on the each side of the slide out, line it up with the outside of the fascia or real close to the outside of the fascia and then you'll staple it down with your D10. It gets stapled right on top of the floor. I 
and then roll your carpet back over the top of it and your fascia trim piece is being put back on um, there are various types of fascia boards we've used in the past this one happens to have uh, two right angle pieces of wood and then a, a flat piece of board placed on top of it grooved board so in this case here the two angles had to be or the one angle had to be put back on the other one was left on and Bill's lining up the board now making sure the carpet's underneath it and tucked away and here he is uh, nailing the fascia board in place.